complete horror. Um, and then when I read the reports of the inspectors, which is what sparked this, um, you, you know, there's a lot of important detail in there. And they are actually quite complimentary about the staff at Western Hospital. They're quite complimentary about an awful lot of the rest of Western Hospital and how it's improved. Um, but they are saying, look, the the accidents in emergency department has got long running problems um, and they aren't getting better. And in fact, on occasions, you know, it's, it is potentially quite dangerous and it's not fair for patients. And at that point, when you hear that it's not right for patients, uh, then sort of everything else has to stop and, and, you, and you have to really focus on that. And so I don't, I don't like the answer that they've come to. I don't think anybody really likes the answer they've come to, but it may be the right thing temporarily to make sure that the A&E is you know, able to provide the service which we all want it to be able to provide in the middle of the night if we or any member of our families gets ill enough to need their help. And actually, the NHS and funding has been something you've been very passionate about over the years. How did we just end up in this situation? Well, the interesting thing is that the, you're absolutely right. The money problem locally for local health has been a long-running thing. And, and actually, we've made huge progress in getting our fair share of the money that's supposed to be out there. We were miles behind what even the previous government's own figures said we should have. And, and after an awful lot of, of, of campaigning and lobbying and, and sort of rugby-tackling ministers um, by me and other people as well, uh, we've, we've got much closer to where we should be. But this problem is about staff, not just about cash. And the problem with it is that because Western is a fairly small local hospital in in the sort of national scale, um, they're having real problems uh, recruiting permanent staff to work in the accidents and emergency department. It doesn't help that there's a a national shortage of those kinds of staff already, but it means that Western is often towards the back of the queue if you're trying to get someone to come and move to, 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 to take up a permanent job. And that makes it difficult because it means that they're always having to rely on locum doctors, on temporary staff, on um, on agency staff, and they cost a lot more. So what you end up with is people who may be terribly good and terribly hardworking, but they're only there for a few weeks, a month or two or something like that. They cost an awful lot more, which puts the budget under strain, um, and you're always living hand-to-mouth. So it's about staffing and about getting people who are going to be permanent members of staff in Western that's been their underlying long-term problem. And it's, and it's not a problem which, in spite of the best efforts of an awful lot of different uh, you know, uh, senior managers at the hospital and all sorts of other people, that they've been able to solve. And that's why we've ended up in, in this you know, dreadful place. There was um, talk before which the NHS didn't allow to merge with the trust which runs Taunton's Musgrave Park. Do you think that kind of move could now be back on the cards? Um, yes, I think it could be. Um, not because... Western isn't a a good hospital. As I said, there's plenty of good things in the report about other parts of the hospital. But simply because if you share um, doctors and staffing with a bigger hospital trust, perhaps one of the ones in Bristol, if if Taunton is is, is not not willing to do this, um, then you end up with, uh, you you can then attract the kind of doctors, the permanent staff that you need, doctors and nurses, to solve the staffing problems that I was just describing. So, yes, some kind of closer working relationship with one of the Bristol Trusts, perhaps, if the Taunton one isn't on the, on the table, could be a really important part of the answer to attract the kind of long-term committed staff to Western that Western has been missing for so long. And um, I know health bosses are keen to stress it's only a temporary closure yeah. and they're expecting it to reopen in the winter. But it seems strange that we have long-standing problems and a temporary closure can address that. Well, it, exactly. And, and my... My huge you know, determination and the, the thing which I am saying, I've been meeting health bosses, not just in the hospital, but also here uh, in Parliament. I've been I've spoken to health ministers already and I've spoken to a number of other people as well to say this must be only temporary. This must be something which we can fix and we need a timetable um, and, a, and a sort of a, a, a proper project plan to get this thing sorted out. This is a, a wake-up call. It's an opportunity for a reset. We need to use it. It isn't pleasant. It isn't good. It isn't what anybody wanted. But what we must now do is use this wake-up call and make sure that we make the changes that absolutely have to be make, made and you know, which we've been trying to fix for a long time.